Hey, what's going on, fam? This is Pastor G. And every last one of us at some point in time deals with anxiety or feeling anxious. It may be because uh, we've taken an exam and we're about to open up the, the exam results. And so we're dealing with things, some anxiety around there. Or we're about to ask somebody to marry us and we're, we're dealing with the anxiety that leads up to that moment. We all have to deal with some form of anxiety at some point in time. And so there's anxiety or feeling anxious, and then there is anxiety. I'm talking about that anxiousness, that worry that becomes debilitating, that forces you to not be able to get any rest or to eat. That anxiety that keeps you from being able to breathe when you think about certain things or when you're put in certain situations. And while it may feel like anxiety is a pretty new phenomenon, the reality of the matter is that it's been around for a very long time. In fact, we're going to take a look in the book of Philippians today, and we're going to talk about the topic, This Anxiety is Killing Me, coming up next on The Trifle Ones. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, I'm reading from the NIV version. It's Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 in the New International Version. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read that back really quickly. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Two things we're going to talk about today, and the first of those is the legitimacy of our position. The legitimacy of our position. Verse 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. Now, there's a reason that many of us deal with anxiety or that we feel anxious at times. It's, it's because we're dealing with some real stuff out there. You know, these streets can be hardcore at times. And so the legitimacy of our position, we, we can't dismiss the fact that we're facing some scary situations. We're dealing with triggers from our past that can create anxiety today and even about the future. We're afraid that we may lose something or someone that's close to us. We don't know what the outcome is going to be under these circumstances. We're not just around here feeling anxious for no reason at all. There, there's a legitimate reason for the anxiety that we're feeling. There is legitimacy for our position. You know, we're having, as I mentioned earlier, difficulty with breathing, and it feels like the walls are closing in on us. We feel paralyzed at times, not knowing what to do in order to get some relief. We're not sleeping well and we're not eating like we should. Some of us are seeing a therapist regularly and yet can't seem to find any relief. We've got to acknowledge that these things are happening to us and, and they're happening around us. We have to acknowledge the legitimacy of our position, where we are right now. It's, it's not a figment of our imagination. Trying to ignore it, it doesn't help and doesn't fix anything. Most scholars, Believe that the book of Philippians is written by Paul, and he says, do not be anxious. This is a whole lot easier said than done. Paul is tripping, talking about, don't be anxious. Has he seen the stuff that we're going through? Has he experienced the stress levels that we got going on today? Like stuff that's happening today ain't like the stuff that was happening back in biblical times. Paul knew that our concerns would be legit and that we would be placed in difficult positions at times. Why? Because he experienced them. In fact, check this out. Paul is in prison at the time that he writes this letter to the church in Philippi. So a man who's in prison for serving God is telling others 
to not be anxious. Yeah, I don't know about you, but if I'm locked up on some trumped up charges, like I'm thinking that I'm probably going to have to deal with some anxiety. So nobody's trying to minimize what you're dealing with or trying to tell you it ain't a big deal. If we weren't going to face some real life stuff, some real life pressures, then Paul wouldn't have to tell us, don't be anxious. You don't have to tell somebody to not be anxious if they don't have no problems. You know, we're, we're looking at others' lives and we're feeling the pressure because we're trying to figure out how come my life isn't as wonderful as theirs looks on IG? How come I'm not able to travel like them? What am I doing wrong? How come they got a home and a rental property and I'm still over here renting? How come they got a boo and I want desperately to be in a relationship? What's wrong with me? I'm a good catch. Like, what's the issue? How come I'm working this nine to five and I'm trying this whole entrepreneurship thing and it just won't work out for me? But online, everybody got a master class and, and people are turning their side hustles into their primary income. But it ain't working for me. How come there's so much pressure to have this and do that and I'm just trying to make ends meet? We're concerned about how we look and what we make and how far along we are. And, and we're crumbling under the pressure of expectations that in many instances come from a world that isn't even real. A world of AI and filters and scams. So on this day, whatever day it is that you're listening to this podcast and, and in whatever month or whatever year you're listening, we got some serious things going on and it shows the legitimacy of our fears, our concerns, or our current position. But then we have our second point, which is the liberty from our petition. The liberty from our petition. The text again says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our requests to God. So Paul says, we need to ask for some things. That's what petition means. It means to ask. Oftentimes we think of a petition when a bunch of people sign off on a piece of paper because they're asking for a particular thing or they're, they're saying that they want a particular issue to be considered. That's why it's called a petition because the people who sign it are asking for something. So we petition God. We, we ask God. We pray to God about, about everything that's bothering us about everything that's creating the anxiety. After we've gone to him in prayer and petition, it says with thanksgiving. So it says we got to shift gears. So the text says pray with thanksgiving. And then it says shift from talking to God about everything that's going wrong to thanking him for everything that's going right. See, in most instances, we don't get anxiety from the things that we like or that we're comfortable with or that are going right. Nah, those aren't the things that give us anxiety. So we got these things that are all jacked up in our life, and that's where our focus is. And it says that we pray and, and we petition God, but then it says with thanksgiving. Think about it. There are a whole lot of things that are working right, that are going well, that we haven't even noticed. Why? Because they're going well. Focus on those things. We don't think about all of our body parts that are working properly. Now nah, we don't do that. Just the ones that don't. So then, here is the liberty or the freedom that comes from our petition. The text says this, that the peace of God, which transcends all, all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. So the liberty or freedom that we receive from our petition or prayer is peace. Fam, peace and anxiety don't exist in the same place. You can't say that I'm at peace, but also be having an anxiety attack at the same time. 
Peace is feeling like you can breathe again. Peace is not waiting for the absolute worst outcome to happen. The text says that this peace transcends. Now, the Greek word here means better than, higher than, or it means superior to. So we're being told that the peace is superior to anything that we could possibly understand. See, you're not supposed to be at peace based on the legitimacy of your concerns and your position. You're not supposed to feel peace in that situation, but it says peace is superior to your situation. It's even superior to, it's better than your even understanding. Hmm. You're not supposed to be at peace based on the legitimacy of your concerns and the realness of your concerns and your position. But the peace is still there. And it will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. So fam, anxiety is real. It ain't made up. It exists. And because of that, there is the legitimacy of our position. But then redirect your eyes and your mind to prayer or petition. Then we will witness the liberty from our petition or the freedom that comes from prayer. That freedom is peace that can exist no matter what you may be going through. It is by doing this that we can stop the anxiety from killing us. Heavenly Father, we come before you now to give you thanks for all things. We asking that you would be with each and every one of us that are feeling the anxiety or we're feeling anxious about situations and circumstances that we may be facing. Dear God, we're praying that you would remind us to go to you, to petition you. Lord, we're not foolish enough to believe that our situations aren't dire and that they're not serious. However, we ask that you would lead us into a place of prayer, a place of prayer that deals with head on whatever we may be facing. But then that we shift away from those things that are going wrong onto those things that are going right. Help us to operate in the spirit of gratefulness, to say thank you, Lord, for this, and thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my job. Thank you for a place to live. Thank you for my health. Thank you for the things that are going well. My God, we are asking Heavenly Father that you would then allow that peace that transcends, that peace that passes even the things that we could attempt to understand so that we would have our hearts and minds guarded by you. We place it all in your hands right now. Have your way, dear God. And not when you do these things, but right now, we thank you in advance. Finally, Lord, we're sorry for the times we doubted you. We're sorry for the times that we forgot about all the things that you did for us. We're sorry for not being everything that you've always asked us to be. Please forgive us. All these things we ask in your son and our Savior. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all of the tracking ones said, amen.